Okay guys, we are playing black, so let's go for the Scandinavian defense, playing d5, we can also pre-move. In case that is going to push, I'm going to play for uh, the Karakhan, but okay, it's going to take, I guess, uh, knight to c3 is coming next. So basic, basically we are playing uh, queen a5, this is all theoretical of course. And now our plan is uh, playing this knight to f6, uh, following up with uh, with this bishop to f5 or uh, maybe g4. And yeah, basically uh, also c6 is a move. Now playing bishop uh, to g4 might be problematic because basically he can take, I can take, and then he can try to go for a check to pick up, uh, to pick up, sorry, the bishop. Right now it's not dangerous because the queen is already defending this file, but... Uh, we do need to keep that in mind. So, before committing, let's play c6. We have an escape uh, escape space for the for the queen, of course. And also notice that uh, this bishop might be in, might be in some uh, situation if uh, white isn't careful because uh, we got this uh, we got this diagonal, okay, that we can exploit if he's not careful. Of course, right now it's not. Uh, uh, it's it's not uh, under any pressure, but we need to keep that in mind. And again, in this position, we don't want to play uh, bishop g4 because takes takes, and then now knight to e5 is going to win his, uh, my bishop back. Okay, because it's going to be defended. So we not we don't really want to play that. But bishop f5 makes sense, and we can always slide it back. Okay, in case he will try to maybe. Uh, put some pressure on the bishop. I can slide back and take with the uh, with the pawn with the h pawn. Okay, so for now let's keep improving. Uh, let's play e6. Okay, also we got uh, some uh, some uh, pressure against his pawn. Um, yeah, so. <clears throat> Let's put some more pressure on his knight. Okay, so actually bishop uh, d2. Now we, sli <coughs> we slide the queen back. We don't really want to take and allow him to take as well. But as you see now, uh, we got some pressure on this pawn, on, c on c2. Now, uh, some position you can try to maybe sacrifice the exchange to open up my position, but uh, this pawn is protected enough times and also this bishop is a, is a defender. And if necessary, we can uh, move my uh, my move my uh, bishop and queen back. So everything is completely solid for now. And if white is not careful, I'm going to take my first pawn, of course. So for now, for example, bishop d3 makes sense. Just uh, trying to put some pressure on my position. In case of bishop d3, I will slide the bishop back and take with the h pawn. This is completely fine. Okay, we can castle both uh, both uh, long or both short or uh, short. Okay, it's uh, really going to. Uh, I'm going to be flexible about that. I don't really want to make a choice yet. Okay, so we decide to long castle now. Of course, uh, taking this pawn is a blunder, so we're not going to do that, obviously. And yeah, basically, let's develop another knight. We need to be careful because he might try to maybe put a rook on the file. So we need to make sure that um, we are not blundering that. Now, of course, uh, he's trying to open up the center and is uh, using the, the idea is that this pawn is pinned. So I guess after takes, he will try to maybe take with the knight. But we can always give this check before committing. And actually opening up the C file is not... I'm not really sure that it's good for white because basically I'm ready to go for a castle. I got a strong bishop on this diagonal. My queen is on the C file. My rook is coming. Okay, and as you see, I can take this uh, bishop with a check first. Okay, let's take this knight, of course. Okay, uh, so basically. Um, we can short castle immediately. Putting some pressure on this on this position is not going to work just yet because he's got uh, enough defenders. So for now, let's short castle. As you see, with the pressure of taking the bishop, of course. And basically, we are ready to put another rook on the on the c file. 
So I guess he will slide the bishop back. Okay, no, so he's trying to go for the exchange. To be honest, I don't really see any other stuff that we, we can do besides to just agree. Uh, we can maybe play play for uh, knight c5. No, knight c5 is uh, not going to work. Mm. Yeah, so let, let's just take. Now we can develop the knight with the tempo on the queen. After an exchange. So I think that uh, as black I'm a bit better, but nothing, nothing too special. But it's my guess only, okay? I'm not really sure. But yeah, my idea is to basically put the rook on the c-file. <clears throat> yeah, of course, I don't really want to allow a queen straight, so uh, I want to decline. We can play in this position queen c6, but then you can play maybe um, rook d6. Okay, so we do want to put pressure. Hmm. This is actually an interesting position. Okay, so let's play queen c6 anyway. If he's going to play uh, rook d6 with the tempo on the queen, I think this rook is a bit misplaced. And then we are going to undermine the defender uh, of, of this square. So if, if uh, I, will, uh, I will be um, allow myself to maybe uh, create some more pressure on his position, I might be in a, in a better position. Also, we got a very nice outpost for this knight on uh, d5, so we can just keep that in mind, of course. But yeah, I still think that uh, as black we are uh, slightly better. Okay, now of course I can take, I can already take a pawn. Mm, we can also play uh, knight to, d to d5 with an idea of uh, knight to b4, trying to increase the pressure. Uh, I am afraid that after the king the spawn, he can try to put a rook on the file, and then um, we might be in uh, some uh, bad situation. So for now, let's develop the knight. Okay, I don't want to commit to uh, g2 just yet. Okay, and as you see, the only way for uh, for white to kick the knight is to sacrifice the exchange. C4 isn't really working because it's pinned, but uh, also maybe try to exchange with this knight, but uh, yeah, I guess he will probably go for uh, going to play uh, knight d3. Okay, but if he's going for knight d3, I can also play a4, uh, a5 and then try to open up the a file. So <clears throat> we are trying to slowly but carefully to put some more pressure on his position. Okay, so... Yeah. Uh, also, as you see, it's another defender to um, uh, to see two. Okay, so we just need to be careful that uh, we are not blundering any piece or anything. Okay, so for now it's too early to take, but uh, basically a4 is coming next with a, with an aggressive play. Okay, so he declined, but uh, we did manage to make him uh, create a bit weakness on his position, of course. So let's fall back. I guess that maybe no c4 is a bit too early also. Okay, and as you see, um, I also want to play for a c3, but with maybe a <clears throat> winning the tempo. But we need to move the queen, of course, and we also need to take care of this diagonal. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to say that this is a hard position, but we need to find the top move, of course. Okay, and after h5, I'm going to play h6, just securing everything. I don't want to uh, give uh, white any counterplay, of course. Also, we can maybe double up the rooks, if necessary. Okay, and the idea is to try to uh, play for uh, knight to c3. Uh, only option is to take with the queen, but now the rook is also supporting uh, c3 square. So I'm trying to win a, win a rook. This is basically my plan. Okay, so he's breaking the pin. He's aware of, of my, uh, my idea, so heads up for him. Okay, so basically again I can double up, 
but I'm a bit afraid that after maybe c4 we can try to we, we can try to go for a checkmate so this is also a bit risky uh, okay let's play a5 let's try to open up the the queen side by, by our pawns don't want to do anything drastic okay and uh, again after playing h uh, h5 we need to be rem to remember to play uh, h6 okay so again he's trying to offer us a queen exchange but I don't really see any reason to allow that so let's decline and basically this move is helping us in order to play b5 and then probably b4 with the support of the pawn with the support of, of the knight so yeah I actually like my position of course h6 is an important move we don't want to allow him to go for a mate and I think a strong move for uh, <clears throat> for uh, for white is to maybe double up the rooks, but he didn't play for that. Now, <clears throat> um, I guess that the the actually um, going for a queen trade now is a nice idea because now you can take with the rook, and basically he's got almost nothing on the position. So yeah, I guess that after uh, g5, I'm going to, to play uh, queen c4. Just trying to go for a queen exchange because I don't want to give him uh, so mu uh, too much counterplay on the position. Okay, so uh, g5, I'm going to, <clears throat> to go for, um, for an exchange. Okay, and basically we are ready to play b4 when possible. Okay, I don't really see a point of just taking because, again, he can just push the pawn and we, we're going to find ourselves in uh, some uh, problems. Okay, now <clears throat> we can take with the pawn, we can take with the rook. Um, I think that lifting the rook is actually makes some sense. Yeah, taking the pawn is not really going to help us so much. So let's take. Okay, and as you see now, this uh, position is not really dangerous for us. Um, <clears throat> we can still go uh, with our old plan and maybe try to go for this push. Okay, so basically uh, before I can take, take, I can take and take and take. Okay, so this is actually nice. But the downside is that I don't really want to give him a pawn majority on the queen side because we might be in some issues. So we can also play rook a8 in order to try to pin uh, this pawn and uh, maybe maybe even uh, uh, take with a check. So rook a8 makes some sense. And I will play faster because we don't really have a lot of time. I mean the situation on the clock is equal but we don't want to blunder the clock of course. Yeah, so now of course we can push and again this pawn is pinned so if he's going to take we're going to take with a check and open up the file so i really like this idea we can even pre-move and if we are able to create a fast pawn maybe and this is going to be much better for us okay so if in this position is going to take with his knight you're going to win a free piece he cannot take back okay so he is trying to break the pin now this game will become interesting because basically <clears throat> he's trying to take the pawn anyway he also got some pressure on this rook my question is that if i'm going to um, take this take this pawn he can take my rook i can push but then he can blockade so this is actually not not strong um, so let's move the rook back with the tempo on h5 if he takes i can take we got enough pressure okay basically we can take this pawn yet and then go for a second one mm, okay so he's <clears throat> he's trying to play it a bit differently i guess with uh, some uh, fast pawns Yeah, but now I can take this pawn with a check. So we, I, I love, I love the idea, but he, he did misplay it. Okay, and basically we can push our first pawn um, 
Yeah, we can push our first pawn. We just need to be careful because he will try to push uh, his pawn himself. Now, what I like about my king position is it also securing any rook infantation to this h file in order to stop our pawn. So, <clears throat> um, I think that we might going to be faster. King c4 is coming next with the tempo on the rook probably. And maybe we're going to even uh, uh, sacrifice the rook if we if we are able to promote. So I still want to see what he's going to do. Okay, it's not so simple to to stop this pawn. I guess he need, he needs to go uh, back. But then we can even escort this pawn to the promotion with the king. So again, I'm allowing myself to to maybe sacrifice this rook for a first pawn in order to promote the queen okay so uh, this is the the advantage that you got if if you're reading the position correctly okay but i must say he's playing quite well okay so he's still thinking and he doesn't really have a lot of time he's got only one minute Okay, and the idea is probably queen c4, a rook b7, I guess he's going to push, we're going to push our pawn as well. And in the right time, I guess, uh, sacrificing the rook in order to create the queen uh, is going to be winning for us. And yeah, he's still not playing, let me just refresh, refresh just in case. Maybe it's a connection, no, okay, so he's thinking. But he doesn't have uh, enough time. Okay, maybe he even uh, gave up. 20 seconds now. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> queen c4, but he doesn't have uh, enough time. Maybe he was thinking about the position, but as you see, unfortunately, it's too late. Yeah, so now <clears throat> uh, we're going to escort the spawn. Mm, we actually might be in some troubles if we're not careful. Um, yeah, we might be in some troubles. Basically, take, take. I can move to h4. He can play rook h1 and I'm on time on h3. Okay, so I must take. I don't really have a choice. Moving aside, um, we're going to blunder probably because of uh, rook d8. So we must take the pawn. Now, we have enough time in order to move back. Okay, and promote another queen. Okay, so I guess he's trying to maybe sacrifice, but I'm not... I'm not sure that... Okay, so first of all, he, he don't have enough time, but I guess his idea was to play like this. Yeah, so this is probably a draw, or maybe, yeah, maybe even he had some advantage. So, actually, I might even uh, misplay it, because in the end, you can uh, try to maybe promote the pawn. So, even, for example, after the exchange... Let's see if we are on time. Yeah, so it seems like we are on time for a draw. So this is basically a dead draw. And uh, we just need to play it uh, uh, <clears throat> correctly, of course. Yeah, so basically it was a dead draw, but uh, we managed to play to win it uh, on time. Yeah, so it was an interesting match. Uh, yeah, and see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.